I tell you something. Doing the Oscar all night uh, is not easy. It's the fourth cup of Earl Grey I've been on today. <sighs> Menful night, wasn't it? of lockdowns, streaming, and just big change within the industry. Turns out all it really needed for the Oscars to actually become relevant was what we call in Rugby Union, a little bit of handbags. Wow. What, what a show. What a show the Oscars were last night. I think we can all safely say we're all Nicole Kidman today, if you've all seen the image that's floating around on Twitter of um, her reaction to the event that we'll discuss a little bit later on. But for an Oscar show, aside from the controversy and the punch-ups, it was a largely predictable show this year. Um, pretty much all the clear favourites won, with the exception of the Lead Actress, Lead Actor, Best Picture Categories, which we will discuss at length. As usual, I took my notes during the ceremony itself. But general thoughts on the Oscars last night. I liked the way it was done. It was a lot more laid back. Why I'm not wearing the suit for this. What Will Packer did as producer, he made it a bit more tolerable. It was a three hour, 42 minute show, considering it traditionally goes four hours. Bit, bit of an inventive way to bring it down to 3.42 by cutting 11 categories from the main broadcast and I thought they were implemented into the show quite quite a lot better than the BAFTAs do it. can definitely say that much. Uh, but what Packer did was make a show that was oriented around social media moments. Having a combination of hosts like that as well, like Schumer, like Wanda Sykes. It was... An interesting show to sort of return towards coverage after two very long years out, as they say. I, 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 yeah, it, it was an interesting Oscar uh, show. So, oh, I think it might be about time I run you through the winners. I just think we're functioning on five hours of sleep here because it's um, a ridiculous time difference for UK viewers. So. Coda won Best Picture last night. That was the major shock win. Everyone thought Power of the Dog would have it. Uh, but the, the Academy went with Coda, and I can understand it. What about inclusivity? Um, it was a good night for Coda, full stop, uh, because Troy Kotzer would win uh, for supporting performance for a lead act, uh, for an actor, which for me, that was the moment of the night, was Kotzer winning for supporting performance. Uh, and Shard Header also won for the original screenplay as well. Uh, not original, adapted. Belfast won original screenplay, still waking up. Uh, but yeah, Coda winning. A bit out of left field, but it was a category that no one could really predict. Um, and I say it every year, Oscar voters like to watch people suffer. This year, not so much. Maybe Covid is all up with them in some capacity. I mean, it was nice to see an independent film winning. It was also good to see Apple win their first major major Oscars. I uh, always, in fact, what was it the other week? I said that it all comes down to the PR spend and Apple put a lot of money into this film and it's had a good journey from Sundance all the way up to um, national wide stream release. It's just a shame that it bypassed most mainstream cinemas because I would have loved to have seen that on the big screen. Uh, the lead performances, Jessica Chastain won for Eyes of Tammy Faye. That was the first big shock of the night. Um, everyone for given the form, um, whether it be Christian Stewart's or it would be, it could have been any one of them, but Chastain won for Eyes of Tammy Faye. She finally has her Oscar after three nominations and attempts at trying. Um, I can't fault Chastain. She's always been like brilliant, no matter what film she's been in. She's always been a good ambassador for the industry, especially in more recent years. And that leads us on to Will Smith. Oh boy. So before it was announced that he had won lead actor, Chris Rock presented a documentary feature. 
Ford. Made a few jokes at the expense of Jada Pinkett Smith and the struggles that she has had. Um, Will Smith then went on to do what myself and some of the journal production team call um, a kill you next Wednesday, a punch in the face. Um, and politely requested, well I don't mean politely is a good word, to um, leave Jada out of it as a result of the jokes that Chris Rock had made. Now, as it currently stands, we're recording this at what, 10.55 uh, UK time on the morning after the night before. So as it stands, Chris Rock is not pressing charges. Uh, the Academy have said that, that they're gonna review into it. Will might get stripped of the award for breach of, code of uh, Academy Code of Conduct. This is gonna be a messy saga that I don't think the Academy is gonna recover from. Um, we've had a lot of controversy at the Oscars over the years, like the infamous La La Land Moonlight situation. Um, this is the ugliest mess that the Academy has got themselves into for a number of years. Uh, and I think it's going to be the thing that everyone remembers most about the show. Not about, not the films, but it'll be the moment where, where were you when Will Smith knocked the living daylight out of Chris uh, Rock? <laughs> When it happened last night, I genuinely thought I was hallucinating for a minute because, again, half past three UK time in the morning, um, I was sat there shocked. I couldn't scream like I would if it had happened at the BAFTAs because UK time difference is brutal. But yeah, Will Smith won for King Richard. Uh, a very big call given events earlier on the show. He did try to apologise then and there for, for his actions, sort of embodying his role as the uh, father of the Williams sisters and being a little bit too overprotective of his, of his family. Um, but wow, wow, wow is all I can say. Supporting forwards, we mentioned Troy Kotzer, that was the moment of the night. Seeing how he delivered his speech, and I, I, I just, I love sign language in general. It's a, it's a great language. A Aussie comedian by the name of Adam Hills enlightened me on that front. Uh, and I would imagine that is for many going to be the moment of the year, eclipsed by the punch. Uh, supporting actress went to Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. Uh, she won the same award that Rita Moreno won for the original 60 years ago. It was one of the earliest awards to call for the night. She had won the Globe, she had won the BAFTA. It was a done deal well before this Oscars went on air that DeBose would win for West Side Story. And again, first black, Latino, LGBTQ winner of an Oscar. The Academy has come a long way since Oscar's so white, hasn't it? Uh, direction went to Jane Campion for Power of the Dog. Um, I, I literally tweeted as this one went out, Oscar voters do like to watch people suffer, and it would end up being the only award Power of the Dog would win last night, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised about, because Power of the Dog had Oscar bait written all over it. It had big performances, it had a lot of talent behind it. It was importantly shot in the middle of COVID over in New Zealand, who, as we've known, have, well, have and continue to have some of the harshest restrictions in the world when it comes to getting into the country and getting talent in. So credit to Campion for actually getting that film over the line. That is arguably why she won Best Director, is for not only shooting the film, making it good, but shooting in the middle of COVID as well. Uh, on to the screenplays. Uh, Kenneth Branagh finally won his first Oscar last night uh, for, for the Belfast screenplay. I could get behind that one. Uh, I would have personally loved to have seen Paul Thomas Anderson win, uh, but Belfast was a powerful film. And a lot of Belfast's strengths came from the writing and the way it was put together. It was a very personal film. It was a very heartfelt film. And those are the kinds of films that the awards voters generally like to go for. Uh, the same with Coda winning for Adapted heartfelt, personal, um, has a lot of meaning to it. Um, it was a textbook uh, pair of screenplays um, winning for those respective categories, um, and I cannot argue with them one bit. Same with the music, and I can I can breathe a sigh of relief. Hans Zimmer has won his second Oscar. Uh, June won Best Original Score last night, um, and in the true rock and roll, style that he, uh, that he is. Hans wasn't even there. Uh, Hans is currently on tour at the minute with his one of his live shows. So he was in Amsterdam, uh, but his daughter woke him up at 2am with a little replica Oscar statue and he gave 
the most hands in a um, acceptance speech in the world. Um, search it up on social media at Hans Zimmer on, on Twitter. Um, he really does it, reflect on the fact that it's a collaborative effort. Um, and I don't blame him uh, because a Zimmer score is all about the musicians he works with. People like Tina Guo, people like Geoffrey Govan, um, who, fun fact, the bagpipes are here in June. The first set aren't real bagpipes. That's Geoffrey Govan on guitar. He's that good. Um, but it was good to see Hans finally win uh, an Oscar. It's a shame it wasn't for an Ogun film, but I'm, I'm happy it was for June nonetheless. Uh, and then No Time To Die won original, school, uh, original song, rather. Um, again, very happy at this one. I, I literally tweeted that, like, the song has grown on me a lot since it came out in January of 2020. Uh, so I've had to hear that song a lot um, in, the in the wake of the release of the film, and it's grown on me a lot. Um, seeing Billy win it last night. Vindication. Because I remember coming on this YouTube channel and saying, I hate the song, she's not the right fit. Last night, Billie Eilish cemented a career in Hollywood. Um, not just with the performance of the song, but the way she composed herself. She was one of the most dignified winners for best original song for a Bond song I've seen for a number of years. On to the technicals, and it was pretty much a clean sweep across the board for cinematography, VFX, sound, production design and editing, June. Uh, and these were mostly awards that um, were presented off the air. Um, it was nice to see Greg Fraser win. Um, again, one of the earliest awards to call. Um, but it was, guys' awards went pretty much as expected. Same with costumes and, and the makeup. Corella won for costumes. Jenny Bevan gave one of the speeches at night, in my eyes. Um, having her own Corella moment, if you will. Uh, eyes of Tammy Faye won makeup and, and hairstyling, which, of course, makes it a double winner with Chastain's win. Um, won a lot more awards than I thought it would last night, but again, Oscar voters do like their elaborate stuff more than anything else. Uh, international feature film, went to drive my car, as expected. Uh, Hamaguchi is very happy, although they played him off. They played him off after 30 seconds. He was only just getting going in his speech and then the band kicked in. Glenn Weiss, you have a lot to answer for, my son. Um, it, yeah, the band last night were a bit hit and miss. Uh, the animated films. Uh, animated feature went to Encanto. Just call that award the Disney Award for Feature Animation now. Come on. They've, they've, they've had, they've had their, their dominance on this category. Uh, the animated short, for those of you who are interested in that stuff, uh, went to the Windshield Wiper. Uh, the documentaries. Questlove won for Summer of Soul. Um, and the one thing about the way Questlove handled it, because bear in mind, this is the award that Chris Rock presented. And this was the award where the punch heard around the world happened. Questlove handled himself very well in that situation. It's just a shame that it'll be overshadowed by the moment. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's edited out of the Academy's highlights when they go on YouTube a little bit later today. Documentary short went to the Queen of Basketball. And the final award, and it was a British winner, uh, was live action short, and that went to Riz Ahmed um, for, the, uh, for the long goodbye. Uh, he's really found his role behind the camera these days, rather than in, in front of it. And what what a career turnaround he has had uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, the multiple winners: June won six, Coda won three, Eyes of Tammy Faye won two. Those are the Oscars. And that was pretty much what the hell happened. And that's almost it for award season, but we do have one last award show to get through before we wrap it up, because the Razzies also happened on Saturday, and it was a good day to be Diana the Musical. It won Worst Picture, Worst Director, uh, Worst Actress for Lead, Worst Actress for Supporting, Worst Screenplay, um, obviously nobody of merit has watched that film. I haven't. I hadn't heard of it before the Razzie nominations were announced. Um, but if it's sweeping the board at the Razzies like that, 
I can understand how terrible it is. Uh, worst lead uh, performance uh, went to LeBron for Space Jam. Worst supporting actor went actor went to Jared Leto of House of Gucci. The worst on-screen combination. And I'm going to read this verbatim. LeBron James and any Warner cartoon character he dribbles on for Space Jam. Worst prequel, remake, rip-off or sequel, Space Jam. Razzie Redeemer from going to a full-time nominee to an Oscar nominee and now winner for King Richard Will Smith, although I imagine that award will be rescinded in light of events. And the worst performance by Bruce Willis in a 2021 movie was his work on Cosmic Sin. I always like talking about the Razzies because they showcase the rantables, as I like to refer to them. But that's it for award season for another year. We made it. Thank God I can get a good night's sleep in. Actually, not quite a good night's sleep. It is a busy night across the board here on LeeJackSmith.com because not only do we have a screen unseen later this evening, which we reckon is either going to be the Outfit, the Novice, or the Lost City. It is genuinely too close to call. I'm awaiting confirmation from Odeon staff on what it will be. But while we're on site at Odeon a little bit later this evening, if you're watching this in the first couple of hours, this video is up. Holla holla, the journal's back tonight. Um, and it's a good episode. If you ever wondered what we get up to on a review day, uh, about how we take the reviews from a certain blue notepad, which I literally have here. I have been preparing the notes for tonight. If you're wondering how we take the reviews from this blue notepad here and turn them into the reviews you read on leejanksmith.com, tonight's journal is a very good place to sort of watch and sort of learn how we do it. And in, on top of that, it's the first journal that we've had nearly, well, over 200 of you watch. It's the first video we're doing since we surpassed 200 subscribers the other day. Thank you all for your support. Welcome, if you've not already done so. Um, we talk on about film here. We have our main series of journal. We've got Talking Some About Film podcast. Um, we've got all sorts of content. Uh, and this is very much your channel. You help shape the content, especially um, stuff like What the Hell Happened, stuff like Cinema 101. Those are your shows. You set the agenda for them. So let us know what you thought of the Oscars in the comments. Um, we had to sort of temporarily restrict comments on the Kermode and Mayo video because that many of you were commenting on it. Um, it blew my mind. But let us know what you thought of the Oscars, if you stayed up to watch it, if you're catching up this morning. Uh, we'd love to know what you thought of an interesting night for the industry. Uh, and stick around. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, stay nice, uh, stay nice phone on when we upload next. We're doing this all in one take just to make my life easy for the edit. Um, stay notified for when we upload next. Uh, the journal will be online from 8pm UK time this evening. Uh, and then the screen and scene review, whatever it ends up being, will be live from about, I'd say, I don't know, two o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Because I've just done what, a 28 hour shift. I hate this time of year, but I love it in equal measure. Uh, but for now, that was our Oscar and awards coverage season for 2020. Uh, awards coverage this season? Yeah, been a long night. My name's been Jack Smith. That was what the hell happened. And until a bit later this evening, we'll see you at the movies. Go and get some sleep, everyone. <laughs>